Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro. Now today we're coming to you from right at the mouth of the beautiful Talabudra River on the Gold Coast in Australia. Now, what I'm going to be telling you about today is I found one of these plant species that we commonly put in bioretention systems growing here right near the seawater, right near the mouth of the river, and I wanted to have a chat to you about that. Uh, as you can see, this video is a little bit less formal given that I'm in board shorts and I'm, uh, I'm holding my audio equipment because I'm actually kind of wet uh, right up to the chest because I couldn't give up the opportunity to snap some photos in the nice light this morning and I got stoked by a wave so I can't clip the audio equipment to me in the salt water. Anyway, the point is, a couple of years ago, sorry while I spin the camera around one-handed, a couple of years ago I was down here and I stumbled across quite a few of these stands of Ficinia nodosa growing right by the water here. Now Ficinia gets used really commonly in Australia in bioretention systems and you can identify this plant because it's got these thin, uh, thin cylindrical leaves with this you know, knobby club type uh, flower slash seed head on the top of it. And of course that's how it gets its common name, knobby club rush. Anyway, what struck me here right, is I've seen um, Ficinia nodosa grow in some bioretention systems that were really sandy, like way sandier than we would actually desirably plant these things in, right? And I was like, wow, it's doing really well. I, at the time, didn't really know anything about where it naturally grew. And about two years ago, I came down here to the beach and found it growing right out along, um, along the bank here. So you can get an idea from this shot where we go water, then we go rocks, and then these plants are right on like the first line of vegetation. So they don't seem to go much further up into the veg, up the side of a burly national park here, but they're growing you know, right down quite close to the water. By the way, it's high tide right now, so you can see they're, they're unlikely to ever actually get the salt water onto them, but they're evidently getting a heck of a lot of salt spray, and the, the soil that they're in is really quite sandy here. And so I think, this is, I think this is cool. I think we can learn stuff from this, because we're always looking for different species and how we can adapt, particularly in a maintenance and an asset management point of view. If you've got a system that's not quite working right, how we can adapt that system to get the most from it without having to spend bucket loads of money. So imagine this, you've got a bioretention system, it's not doing well because the filter media is really sandy. In fact, I know of a few instances are up north in Australia where, where we think some systems were built um, with essentially beach sand in them. So, so, and the problem here, right, if it's really sandy, it's not gonna hang on to lots, the filter media is not gonna hang on to lots of water and a lot of plants are gonna have heaps of trouble growing into it. Even worse if that sand happens to be beach sand because it's gonna have a heck of a lot of salt in it and uh, most plants just aren't gonna, aren't gonna handle that. But in this case, maybe we've got an opportunity. So I've seen, I've seen the Ficinia nodosa do really well uh, a little bit north of here in some bioretention systems really close to the, the beach. Really sandy conditions in those. Um, probably not saline though, but really sandy. And then I see it here, right near this salt water, salt water spray, like when it's windy here, there's spray going everywhere, right? And it's doing well in the sandy soil. So I imagine you've got a bioretention system it's um, really sandy, you're having heaps of trouble getting stuff to grow in it, and you're like, well, do I need to rip up the filter media and replace it with something a little bit better? Do I need to like dig heaps of organic matter and, and maybe some fine sediment into it to try and make it into more of a soil? Or do you want to give it a crack and see whether you can get a, um, like a sand tolerant species going? And it strikes me, whoops, as the uh, runner goes past there, I'll try not to film her. Um, it strikes me that uh, this could be a really useful species to try. Now, I can't guarantee that it's gonna work, right? Um, but I think there's potential when you put together the systems I've seen just north of here, where it does really, uh, you know, doing really well in sandy conditions near the, near the spray, combined with where we've got it growing here in its natural habitat, I think there's potential. Cool, so let's just spin this back around. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found that interesting and I hope, you know, I've obviously waffled on about Ficinia nodosa here today, but I hope you can also take the, the, the broader message here, which is look around at where you see these species in the, in the natural environment, look at how they're growing, how they're doing, and then put them into bioretention systems that mimic that. You know, if you see a species growing in a riparian area with, uh, with plenty of shade, and then you have a bioretention system that's got trees in it but not much understory, maybe you try that species out in underneath and so on, right? So uh, cool, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this episode of ID Anthro. 
If you want to find out more about what it is that we can do, you can go to our website, which is www.idianthro.com. You can also find us on Facebook. Uh, we post lots of little updates and that sort of thing there. Obviously, you can like the page to kind of keep up to date. Uh, that is facebook.com slash idianthro. And we post all our videos on YouTube, so you can find us there as well and leave comments and that sort of thing. Finally, if you've got any topics you'd like, to, like us to address in a video, uh, drop us a line you know, through Facebook or comments in YouTube or send us an email, that sort of thing, and let us know. And we will do our best to uh, create a video or find someone who's uh, got the expertise who we can talk to in a video to, uh, yeah, to answer that question for you. Okay, sweet. That's it. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.